Hello, I welcome you all in this course on refrigeration and air conditioning. Today we will cover multi evaporator and cascading system in vapor compression system. In a multi pressure system, for last two lectures we are dealing with multi pressure system. Multi pressure system and multi pressure systems we have already covered in the last two lectures multi compression system. Now, in multi compression system the compression has taken place in more than one stages right and <coughs> instead of having two pressure system because two pressure means two pressure system means simple vapor compression system this is a two pressure system so on a ph diagram so this is a two pressure system and <coughs> We have uh, already done this multi compression system where more compression takes place in more than one stages, maybe two stages or three stages. Another multi pressure system is multi evaporator system. System. In multi evaporator system, there may be one compressor, right? Compressor compression. For compression, there may be one compressor, but there are number of evaporators. Instead of having one evaporator, there are number of evaporators evaporating at different temperatures. Now, the benefit of this system is suppose I want to have a deep freezer to for the preservation, let us say is minus 40 degrees centigrade. I want to have a <coughs> I mean uh, a freezer also at uh, let us say 5 degree centigrade to uh, keep the things. So, <coughs> at these two temperatures if I have a simple system it is difficult to operate I mean I will have to make arrangements, but here if I have a multi evaporator system we can expand the uh, compressed liquid sorry not compressed liquid this is condensed refrigerant at high pressure at state 3 in two different evaporators and these evaporators are operating at different temperatures or different pressures. This type of system is known as uh, multi evaporator system. The multi evaporator system is further classified as individual expansion wall system. And multiple expansion wall multiple expansion wall system. Individual expansion wall means every evaporator has its own expansion wall. So, the refrigerant at state 3 is expanding in evaporator 1 and evaporator 2 and both the evaporators are having their own expansion wall. In multi expansion wall is the refrigerant which is entering the any evaporator is let us say evaporator 1 or evaporator 2 it is expanded in two stages that is why it is known as multi expansion arrangement and there is third type of system which has number of uh, I mean two compressors or more than two compressors and more than two evaporators also and this type of system is known as cascade system or the, the arrangement is known as cascading. Now, in the cascading there are two simple vapor refrigeration or more than two simple vapor compression cycles and different refrigerants are used in different cycles. We will discuss this cascading in details. First of all, we, will, we have already covered this and now we will start with multi evaporator system with individual expansion wall. Now, in this type of arrangement there is one compressor earlier there used to be one evaporator now there is one compressor and one condenser. The vapor 
going from the compressor is getting condensed in the condenser. Now, let us come to the evaporation side. The vapor is available here. Let us start from here 1. It goes to the evaporator 1 and before that it gets expanded. Then again vapor goes to evaporator 2 and then again it gets expanded in expansion wall 1 and expansion wall 2 <laughs> respectively and this is E2. Now, vapor is emerging from E1 and E2 as well. So, this is state 1, this is state 2, this is state 3 and this is state 4, let us say state 5. Now, pressure at state 5, 4 and 5 are not same, pressure are different because here expansion is taking place earlier at higher pressure. So, pressure at state 5 is not same as the pressure at state 4. State 5 is not as the pressure at state 4 and we have only one compressor and there is only one compressor is available for this purpose. In this case, we have no other choice but to expand this uh, vapor available at 4 to the pressure of 5 and here at pressure 5 it is sent to the compressor. Now, if I want to depict this process on pressure enthalpy diagram on a pressure enthalpy diagram there is a saturation line x is equal to 0 x is equal to 1 this is condenser and at the exit of the condenser, the state is 1. Expansion is taking place in one first expansion device and we are getting state 2 and state 2, the vapor is entering the evaporator and coming out of at state 4. Now, further in this down the line, this vapor continue to expand up to state 3, 3. So, 2, 2 it, it is expanded up to state 3 and after attaining state 3, it goes to the evaporator 2. This is E 2, this is E 1, this is condenser and after heat exchange in the second evaporator, it emerges as state 5 and here we have a state 4. What we should do? We should here reduce the uh, pressure at the exit of the evaporator 1 through throttling. So, in a throttling process, enthalpy remains constant. So, through a throttling process, the pressure is reduced and mixing takes place. Here mixing takes place and after mixing, the mixture it goes to the compressor and compression takes place and we attain state 6. So, this is a this is an arrangement of multi evaporator system. It is very useful especially in the shopping area it is very useful where some of the items in, a, in, 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 in for some of the food products we can uh, preserve at a very low temperature let us say minus 40 degree centigrade or minus 30 degree centigrade and some of the items which are to be preserved on a higher temperature may be minus 10 or 0 degree centigrade. So, we can have this type of arrangement where we have two evaporators and both the evaporators are operating at <coughs> uh, different temperatures. So, this is the arrangement for uh, multi evaporator system with individual expansion wall. We can have another arrangement also where there are multiple expansion valves. In this type of arrangement, we will start with the compressor because we have only one compressor. So, we will start with the compressor. So, there is a compressor and there are two evaporators again. This is E2 and this is E1. 
and there is a condenser and vapor is after condensation again the vapor is emerging from condenser vapor is emerging from sorry the liquid uh, refrigerant is emerging from the condenser state 1 and the entire liquid is expanded in one expansion wall and the, we get the state 2. So, state 1 to state 2 we get this expansion we get in one expansion wall this is state 2. And after then attaining state 2 the vapor enters the evaporator 1 part of the vapor and the process then he, it picks up heat in the evaporator and we get state 3 here. Now, remaining part of the expanded vapor, remaining part of expanded vapor which is available at this pressure is again expanded and a flash gas type of removal arrangement is also provided here. So, that only liquid enters here, only liquid enters here and we get these processes. So, liquid enters here means <coughs> that is state 4, that is state 4, after expansion state 5 and then we get state 6. Now, after staining, attaining state 6, again these two have to be mixed and for mixing again there is same issue that this pressure has to be reduced to this one. Okay. So, again throttling takes place here and mixing of both the refrigerants and then compression in a compressor. Compressor. So, this is how the multi expansion uh, system, multi expansion, multi evaporator system works. It is called multi expansion because refrigerant is expanded in two stage for evaporator 2 and now these are connected, yes, these are connected and it goes to 7 state 7 and then it is compressed and get state 8. Now, one arrangement we can make here in this type of system instead of having one compressor if we provide two compressors. Now, we have variety of components with us, we have flash gas removal system, we have multi compression system, we have worse with uh, multi evaporation system, evaporator system, evaporator system with individual expansion wall, evaporator system with multiple expansion wall. So, we can have combination of all these arrangements to find <coughs> to, to develop a system which can give the best performance. So, instead of it is also recommended that instead of expanding get vapor from state 3 to state this state and then again compressing it. Instead of that, if we are able to make use of two compressors, instead of using one compressor, there are two compressors and one compressor for this and both the compressors are compressing gas up to state 8. So, this type of arrangement if I want to make here, then definitely the, the uh, in fact they are not parallelized they are diverging lines. So, instead of drawing them like this I will like to draw them like this. So, we will get this type of uh, uh, pH diagram for multi expansion arrangement. Now, the problem with these type of multi compression system, the pressure ratio is high. These systems are used where the pressure ratio is high, but the problem with the multi expansion systems is that a refrigerant, suppose I will give you some numerical values, then things will become clear to you because sometimes it is not possible to use same refrigerant at a wide range. For example, uh, in, in chemical applications the temp we require temperature of the order of let us say 100 degree centigrade or in some of the applications we require temperature as minus 80 degree centigrade or minus 60 degree centigrade. Condenser temperature is 50 degree centigrade or 40 degree centigrade. 
So, this temperature difference, temperature variations is very high. This temperature variation is very high, similarly corresponding pressure ratio P k by P o or P 2 by P 1 or P h by P l pressure in condenser and pressure in evaporator, this ratio becomes very, very high. For certain range, we can go for this uh, multi compression system, but for pressure ratio it is okay, multi compression system can be accepted, but for this wide variation in temperature, same refrigerant may not be recommended for the use. Uh, let us look at the properties of some of the refrigerants, for example, R 22. So, R 22 has normal boiling point minus 40.81 degrees centigrade, right. So, if I am using this R 22 at minus 20, the pressure is 2.45 bar and if I am using R 20 at uh, uh, minus 80, it is 0 0.1037 bar. Remember, the moment we reduce the pressure, specific volume increases. So, the moment we reduce the pressure, the specific volume increases, the specific volume increases. Here also you can see for this R uh, 22, if the evaporator temperature is 80 degree minus 80, the pressure is only 0.1 bar and specific volume is also very high. It is 1.7782 meter cube per kg and if you look at the refrigerant R 23, it is normal boiling point is minus 82 degrees centigrade. So, at, at, at one atmospheric pressure, it will boil at minus 82.2 degrees centigrade and specific volume is only 0.1923. Specific volume is important because specific volume at the exit of the evaporator decides the size of the compressor. So, specific volume of the vapor at the exit of the evaporator should be as low as possible. That is one thing. Second thing is, if you look at uh, pressure at 40. Suppose I choose 23, okay, for minus 80 it is okay, it is giving uh, minus 82 uh, degree centigrade uh, at normal boiling point is normal eight, minus 82 degree centigrade. So, it will boil, suppose I want temperature minus 80 degree centigrade, R 23 will boil below the atmospheric pressure, it is okay, I can use it for minus 100 also. But the problem is when it is taken at 40 degree centigrade, it is critical temperature is 26.47. So, I will be operating the system above the critical temperature and the COP of the system will reduce. So, I cannot use this refrigerant for this purpose. And <coughs> similarly, if I use low pressure refrigerant that is R123, R123 is okay when the pressure is 40 degree centigrade, pressure is 1.5 bar, 1.5 times approximately atmospheric pressure, it is okay. But when I use R123 at minus 80, the pressure is 0 0.0013 bar, it is very, very low, right. And in that case, the specific volume is also very high, minus 80, the specific volume is 83.667. Huge amount of vapor has to be handled by the compressor. So, now we have two options, we have to trade off. We have low pressure refrigerants, low pressure refrigerants is like R123 which are at high temperature, at condenser temperature, their pressure is 1.5, it is okay. But on the evaporator side, they have very high specific volume. So, if I use this refrigerant, I, the size of the compressor will be very large, that is not recommended. If I use high pressure refrigerant like R 23, in that case, evaporator side is okay, the, uh, the refrigerant will evaporate at uh, minus 82 degree centigrade, it is its normal boiling point. Specific volume is also good, 0 0.1923, very small specific volume. But when it comes to the condenser, it is become it becomes super critical. Same is case with the ammonia. So you take any refrigerant. So we can see that any of the refrigerant which we have to deal in a very high range of evaporator and condenser, let us say minus 100 to uh, 50 degree centigrade, the difference is approximately 150 degree centigrade. One refrigerant cannot work. And there are many other reasons for <laughs> going for 
cascading system. I am just justifying why we should use a cascading system. The single refrigerant system is used in the system, the refrigerant should have high critical temperature and low freezing point. Farther we operate from <laughs> critical temperature, more we are close to the COP of a corner cycle. So, COP of the system, COP of the cycle increases when it operates far away from critical temperature. So, that will not be possible when we use a single refrigerant for a such a wide range. The operating pressure with the single refrigerants become too high or too low that I have just now I have explained to you. Likelihood of migration of lubricant oil from one compressor to another leading to a compressor breakdown. Yes, this happens in uh, multi-staging compressors when refrigerant from one compressor enters to the other compressor. In that case, <laughs> Lubricating oil also shift to the another compressor and uh, the, 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 the lower pressure compressor becomes the short of lubricating oil. So, that is another uh, problem uh, in multi-staging and very low temperature in evaporator and large suction volume for high boiling refrigerant that I have already explained you. If the high boiling refrigerant means normal boiling point is high. In that case, if we take the refrigerant for the application of very low temperature the specific volume will be high and that is also not acceptable. The high pressure in condenser for low boiling refrigerant, high pressure ratio, low COP. So, if we go for a single, if we take a single stage simple cycle for uh, vapor compression cycle, so definitely the moment the pressure ratio increases, the COP of the cycle goes down. And operation of equipment on low temperature, I am talking about minus 100, minus 120 or minus 150 degrees centigrade, that also becomes difficult. So, in order to avoid this, a cascading system is recommended. Now, in cascading system is nothing but a combination of two simple vapor compression cycle or two or more vapor compression cycles. It means, we have one uh, vapor compression cycle which has a condenser a simple vapor compression cycle, compressor, expansion device, evaporator. So, this is a T O 1 and this is T K 1, temperature of condenser 1, temperature of evaporator 1. Now, this is one simple cycle, a particular refrigerant for use this cycle may be here temperature minus 80 degree centigrade, here temperature may be 0 degree or minus 40 degree centigrade. Now, this condenser is used to take away, now how the condensation will take place here? Suppose the temperature here is minus 80 degree centigrade and temperature here is minus uh, 20 degree centigrade. Now, how the condensation will take place here? For the condensation of vapor at minus 20 degrees centigrade, we need to have fluid which has temperature lower than this, right. So, we cannot use air, we cannot use tap water, water cooling is avoided, it is not possible, air cooling is not possible. The possibility is that we have another vapor compression system, we have another vapor compression system which has evaporator temperature less than this one. So, there is another vapor compression system, this is T K 2 and it has also its own expansion wall and it has evaporator uh, T O 2 and then it has its own compressor. Both the systems are working with different working fluids. Now, these systems are, they are made as one heat exchanger or this is known as cascading. So, the heat of the heat of this condenser is taken by away by this evaporator. So, this evaporator may be at let us say minus uh, 25 degree centigrade operating between minus 25 to 35 degree centigrade. I am just taking some values, so that you can have clear cut inside of the phenomena. So, <coughs> I am repeating in a cascading system, we can have two or more simple uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycles. Each cycle has its own compressor, evaporator and condenser. 
Let us take one cycle, uh, suppose we have to maintain minus 80 degrees centigrade and one cycle will operate minus 80 to minus 20 degrees. For example, I am just giving an example and here the condensation of vapor is taking place at minus 20 degrees centigrade. Now, in order to condense this vapor, we need a fluid which has temperature lower than the minus 20 degrees centigrade, right. So, the air can normally the air cannot be used, water cannot be used, tap water cannot be used. So, we what we have done, we have introduce another cycle which has evaporated temperature let us say minus 25 or minus 30 degrees centigrade and these two are clubbed or a heat exchange is arranged between evaporator of higher pressure to evaporator at lower pressure or condenser at lower pressure and in this case the condensation of vapor will take place in this condenser and this heat will be taken away by this evaporator and it will go to this cycle. So, and we can have similar type of arrangement, two or three similar type of arrangement and this is known as cascading of uh, vapor compression system. We assume that the COP of this refrigeration cycle is equal to the COP of this refrigeration cycle. So, if the COP Carnot cycle, so Carnot cycle working between this temperature, between this temperature is equal to the COP of the Carnot cycle working between this temperature. So, T O 1 divided by T sorry T C S T K 1 minus T O 1 is equal to T O 2 divided by T K 2 minus T O 2. Now, in ideal case we assume that T O 2 is equal to T K 1. If we assume T O 2 is equal to T K 1, then T O 1 divided by T O 2, this T K 1 is replaced by T, this temperature we assume is equal to this temperature. So, T K 1 is equal to T O 2 minus T O 1 is equal to T O 2 divided by T K 2 minus T O 2. Now, we cross multiply T O 1 T K 2 minus T O 1 T O 2 is equal to T O 2 T O 1 T O 2 square minus T O 1 T O 2. We have just simply cross multiplied this and you can see on the left hand side T O 1 T O 2 T O this will be cancelled out and <laughs> we will be getting T O 2 is equal to under root T O 1 T K 2. It means approximately this is not uh, exact value, but approximate value at temperature this is appro approximate absolute temperature T O 2 is equal to under root of multiplication of maximum temperature and minimum temperature. So, in a cycle if I want to develop a cascading system for a temperature range of T 1 and T 2 T max and min T minimum. So, T max multiplied by T minimum of the cycle, if we, I take under row of this, this is going to be the temperature of evaporator or condenser of high pressure or low pressure cycle. For the sake of heat transfer, we can have some adjustment in the, in the, in the temperature values, so that we can attain a design of a realistic system. So, that is all for today's lecture. Now, in next lecture, we will solve a typical example on vapor compression system. Thank you.